Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to the shop. As you may know, this is a product that is produced and sold by Advanced Innovations, and we've sold quite a few of these. I get a lot of questions and a lot of comments about certain aspects of this, this particular product, and I figured I'd shoot a short video and maybe expand your capabilities and give you something to think about. This is a 6-inch plate. That is an 8-inch plate. They are both A36 steel. Three-eighths of an inch thick, two and a half inches wide. For sake of demonstration today, I'm going to use the six-inch plate. Let me put this camera on a tripod, and we'll get to it. Anyway, the kit comes with four clamps, eight screws, and a plate of your choice, depending on uh, how much you want to spend. All right, tripod coming up. Let's do it. Now, if you're like me, Ten years from now, you want the surface of your plate to look as good as it does the day you bought it. So, that being said, suggestion number one. When you set one of your clamps up on this little plate, and I'm going to assume that the majority of you are putting your screws in from the top because that gives you the most zero clearance adjustability when the screw comes out the bottom. It allows you to clamp on really thin parts. When this screw makes contact with this plate and you torque down on the primary clamping screw, you may leave a footprint on the back of your part, or excuse me, on the back of your plate. That being said, put a shim under the heel of the clamp. Don't let the screw go directly down onto the plate. Let the screw dig into a sacrificial piece and away you go. If you want more adjustability out of these things, well, do it this way. You can see this is a one inch long screw. You'll get about, well, about five eighths of an inch worth of heel height out of this. And if you put the screw in from the bottom, you can see that you've almost doubled that. So don't be afraid to use the screw in from the bottom as well. And the same thing applies with the head of this. Put it on some type of shim so that you don't dig up your plate. That would be setup tip number one. Should be a standard. Absolutely should be a standard. Now since this comes with four clamps, and you're not always going to use four clamps, well, here's a thought for you. You can use two of the clamps. Bear with me. can use two of the clamps as a stop for a round part. And depending on how many pieces you have, that can come in real handy. It gives you the opportunity to use a strap across the center of the part to machine it. And it also gives you the option to come in from either side and still clamp it securely and repeat the parts in and out all day long. There you go. You don't always use the four. So that's a good way to make some use out of the two that are sitting on the bench still. And here's another thought for you. Stack them. You now have an adjustable stop created by the use of two clamps. Clamp one securely to the plate, clamp the other one to the clamp. But just make sure that when you tighten down the screw, that the screw doesn't go all the way through and hit the plate. So use a shorter screw. And also reverse the clamp, should you need to. There you go. Point made. Makes for a good stop. For my kit, I've also made some brass buttons. I made them out of brass. If you're going to make them, you make them out of whatever you want to make them out of. But that's what they look like. 
little cylindrical pieces, counterboard, screws in them. What does that do for you? Well, let's see. Let's put two in here. Stop, stop. Now you have repeatable setup for small square parts. And you can do the same thing if you wanted to for the two of these. Use those for your round parts. Okay, I hope the light's going on here. Show you a little bit of versatility for what you got. And if you don't have one of these, buy one, make one, whatever. But you're going to find they come in real handy for working on small parts that just, you just can't hold them in a conventional manner. Recently did a job for a gentleman where I had to make some drive shafts for an RC boat. Little dog bone drive shafts with the holes on either end. That, actually, here's one of the setup pieces. So it was round on both ends, relieved in the center, and it had the cross pins. You've seen them. If you're RC people, you know what I'm talking about. Well, this is how that was done. <laughs> it wasn't done with that Allen key, I'll tell you that. Here we go. I'm not going to torque this all the way down. It just takes too much time. I screwed a piece of aluminum to the plate, kicked the plate up at 45 degrees, ran an end mill across it, and now I have a V-block true to the world. Or it was then positioned in the V-block thusly, clamped one clamp in the center, and I was able to drill the holes comfortably and repeatedly. So, there you go. Screw a block to your plate, machine the block, that's now your fixture. Take it in and out of the machine as you see fit. All right, I think that's good for the bench stuff. Let's take it over to the vise. I will show you a couple of ideas on what to do if this doesn't fit in your vise, if you don't have a fence, if you need more room. Let's go to the mill and check it out. Let's do it. Normal standard setup for the fixture. Simple. Set it on a couple of fixture plates, lock it down, away you go. Tremendous amount of versatility. I've had customers call me and send me pictures of having modified the plate where they put in dowel pins in between each of the square patterns and make a real cheese plate out of this thing to give it dimensional or location capability because there is no back rail. Well, what if you need a back rail? You need a back rail, use shorter parallels. Let your stationary jaw now be your back rail for locating your part. Part's now square. Same thing if you need an angle section on that particular part. Use an angle block against the back jaw. Now the part is positioned 15 degrees or whatever gauge block or angle block you put on there. Clamp it down and away you go. What if your part doesn't fit between the confines of the jaws? Well, that's not a problem either. Go back to the original parallels. But instead of using a single parallel on the back, couple more in there. And I think you can see what just happened. Now you have a tremendous amount of projection swing room with the part if you need it. And you have a back fence as a stop or want to set your angle for your part. What if the part's really thin? Well, <laughs> glad you asked. Here we go. Now, oh, forgive my excitement here. It is about 36 degrees where I'm standing, and I'm about 18 inches from a very powerful parabolic heater, so that's nice. Okay, really thin part. Let's see what we got. Let's go a little lower. Make the point.
really thin pieces can be easily handled, easily managed by using another block. And for sake of argument, I'm going to use a scale, a really thin scale. Put your block in there, open the vise. Boom, gotcha. Okay, slave block on top. This now becomes your registration surface and away you go. Well, what if you have to mill something that's a little bit lower than the jaw? It's not a big deal either. Put sacrificial material on either side of your part. You've seen me do this too if you're a subscriber or a viewer of this channel. There you go. Now, if you have to mill a detail on a part that's really thin and it's got to go sub-jaw, well, just mill directly into the support material, make your part, and when you're done, naturally, you're either going to have to relocate the support material to get more, but you can, it's basically like having portable soft jaws instantly. All right, one more way that we can take a look at how these things are held. If you have a part that you need to work on the end or do some work on the side and it's a little awkward to hold it, because once you have the part mounted to the plate, you can't exactly hold the plate this way without hitting the part. Well, you can if you use blocks on either end. That's a one, two, three blocks, sacrificial material, scrap, whatever. Close down on your plate. Now you have a vertical clamping surface that comes in very handy. And one thing I do not want to skip over before I get out of here. I have been told by a lot of people, by a lot of guys, man, I'd love to have one, but my vice doesn't open up far enough to hold the plate. You have several options at this point. If your vice has removable hard jaws, take the hard jaws out, and you're going to pick up the double thickness of a single jaw for the opening that you can now use to squeeze your part. It is okay to put a part in on the soft carrier jaws, but you know, don't do it forever. That's why the hard jaws are hard, right? If that's still not an option for you, well, this is another part that I've made, and it's come in real handy as well. This particular rail gives you capability to hold it in a much thinner vise much smaller vice, and you don't need parallels. If you know that the top of your hard jaw surface is true to the world, or close enough for the work that you do, there you go, you're in. Parallel set, you only need minimal opening to hold the part, and you're in. That comes in very handy. Can relieve the center out so the screws that you use can still protrude through and not bump into anything or you can just use a solid bar and shorter screws that's entirely up to you but that's the solution for smaller vices guys it seems fairly straightforward once you see it i do believe that is all i got for you i don't think that there are any other small attachments that i use but keep everything in a box keep it right all together and keep it by your side you're going to be glad that you have one of these if you are a model builder or work on small parts it's a good weekend project make one buy one whatever thanks for tuning in spending a couple minutes with me today wherever you are in the world i hope you're well and happy and safe and warm today because it is cold where i'm standing just well maybe not like canada cold but it's cold thanks for hanging in guys joe pie advanced innovations austin texas